Okay, this will be the third lecture of chapter 5. And here we'll talk about measuring, uh, experimentally, uh, measuring enthalpy. Recall that enthalpy uh, is essentially another word for heat. And what we're looking at here is how reactions release heat. Reactions, we said, can release energy in two basic forms, work and heat. And uh, we've kind of dropped work, and we're going to from now on talk about heat or enthalpy. So the way we measure how much heat a reaction releases is by carrying out the reaction uh, in a solution, aqueous solution, uh, and then we can uh, measure how much heat uh, is released to the solution, uh, and from that, to essentially to the water in the solution, and from that we'll be able to determine how much heat the reaction released. Because remember, the reactants are part of the system, and everything around it, including water, is part of the surroundings. So if we can measure how much was released to the surroundings, in this case water, we'll be able to find out the change uh, of enthalpy of the actual reaction. So what we'll do is we'll have to take a look at three things. Uh, we'll take a look at the temperature change, and because the higher the temperature change, the more the reaction released, the more heat reaction released. We have to take a look at how much water we have in the cup, uh, because if we have uh, a little bit of water, then uh, the temperature will shoot up much higher than uh, if we have a lot of water. It won't go up as high. So we have to consider the water, how much water. In this case, it'll be grams. And then we have to consider something called heat capacity. And this is a property of every material. Uh, and heat capacity essentially is a measure of how well a substance takes in heat or releases heat. It's a measure of the substance's uh, ability to uh, interact with heat in a way. So these three things we'll have to consider. And uh, we're going to take a, a little closer look at what the specific heat idea is, or a heat capacity. A heat capacity and specific heat, these are actually slightly different. Uh, so the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of a substance by one degree, either Kelvin or, or Celsius, remember Kelvin and Celsius are equivalent um, in terms of how much you increase by, this is called heat capacity. So this is a general general term, heat capacity, you know, the capa how, how does a substance uh, accept uh, heat. And then specific heat capacity, oftentimes just specific heat, uh, is literally uh, how much heat is required, how much energy is required for a gram of a substance to go um, up by one uh, Kelvin or one Celsius. And the idea here is specific means on a per gram basis. We can also talk on a per mole basis. So for example, we can say water's specific heat is such and such. We can say iron's specific heat is such and such. So here actually are some of the uh, specific heats. Uh, we can either measure them in joules, the SI unit, or in calories. So if you take a look, iron specific heat, iron specific heat is 0.45, and then silvers is 0.24. So these are these can be found essentially for any substance. What's interesting is if you take a look at water, water specific heat is very high compared to the rest. Whether you do it on a per joule basis or a per calorie basis, and actually here is where you can see where the joule and the calorie are connected. In fact, uh, water was set at one calorie. Uh, the specific heat of water was set at one calorie, kind of like the density of water is set at one, and everything else relates to that. So it is here. And the joule, that's why the joule is 4.18. Uh, you can see kind of the connection. Hopefully you can see the connection where that 4.18, where, where the joule came from. So um, water's very high heat capacity uh, makes it a, a perfect material uh, for using it in measuring the heat released in reactions because water can take up so much heat, it can store a lot of heat, and we can work with it very well, and it's also safe. You know, uh, There are other substances that are like this, but they're not as safe as water is. So this is the equation we're going to be using. The amount of heat we'll call Q, like previously, will depend on three things. Uh, how much water we have, this is the mass. The specific, the specific heat of water, we'll uh, signify this by C, and then the change in temperature. So these three factors will be considered, and you just multiply these three together to get how much heat was released. Uh, and here we have a note about sometimes S is used for the specific heat instead of C. Okay, well, let's try this. Uh, so the question is how much heat is needed to warm 250 grams of water from 22 degrees Celsius to 98 degrees Celsius. And the specific heat of water is given to us as 
joules per gram degree Celsius. And then the second question is, what is the molar heat capacity of water? Okay, so why don't we uh, go ahead and set up our equation. So our equation is heat is equal to mass times specific heat times the change in temperature. So in our case, uh, the mass is, we can put these down, our mass is 250 grams. Our specific heat is given as 4.18 joule per gram degree C. Uh, and our delta T, our change in temperature, is essentially our final minus initial. So uh, we're going to do, looks like 98 degrees Celsius minus 22 degrees Celsius which gives us 76 degrees C. Let's just plug these three numbers in and we'll get our answer. So in this case we've got ourselves 250. Uh, we're going to put grams in here. Here's the units. Multiplied by 4.18 joules per gram degree C. Multiplied by 76 degrees C. Now what you'll find uh, is the grams will cancel out on top and on the bottom, the delta C will cancel out top and bottom, and what we'll be left with uh, is going to be joules. So if we pull out a calculator and do this quick calculation, we get 250 times 4.18 times 76. And what we should get is a nice big number, 79,420 joules. Uh, so this is our answer. Sometimes it's easier to report this in kilojoules, and again, a kilojoule is a thousand joules, so if we divide by a thousand, uh, we should get ourselves uh, 79 kilojoules. And because our significant figures, uh, we have two as the least, uh, both here and here, we'll say 79 kilojoules as our final answer. The second question where it says, what is the molar heat capacity of water? Um, that's kind of a separate question, but let's answer it here. Uh, since the specific heat of water uh, we see is this number, so we can actually do the second one, maybe in a different color. So uh, we're going to essentially convert uh, from joules per gram degree Celsius to joules per mole degree Celsius. We're going to do a simple um, dimensional analysis. So 4.18 joules per uh, gram degree C. What I'm going to do is actually let me rewrite this as uh, 4.18 joules divided by gram degree C. So we see that gram is actually on the bottom. So what we'll do is we have to convert from grams to moles essentially. And so because grams is on the bottom, grams will go on top and moles will go on the bottom. So we're converting from grams to moles. So these cancel out. And a mole of water is 18.02 grams. And this is H2O, the mass of water, from the periodic table. Uh, and then essentially we'll get our answer. So multiply 4.18 times 18.02 gives us 75.3. In this case, uh, joules per mole degree C. This is the answer for the second part. Really, it's a, it's a matter of converting from grams to moles. So uh, hopefully that, uh, that satisfies this first portion. Okay, we can now talk about the specifics about uh, how we measure uh, the actual experimental design of measuring the heat released. And uh, we place a solution is what, uh, in what's called a calorimeter. And essentially it's a device. Here's a homemade device you can uh, use. Um, and we measure how much... Uh, water is in there inside, we measure the temperature change and we measure uh, specific heat which will be uh, 4.18 because principally we'll be using water so even though our solutions specific heat um, you know if our solution has something else usually uh, it, it, it's very very close to this value so this is actually good enough for us to use in most cases to get a good approximation of the heat released so uh, this is a, a coffee cup calorimeter so we have our thermometer which will check the temperature change um, and then we'll have a little stir to help out, uh, so and a little cork stopper to make sure heat does not escape. But but all uh, is measured by the thermometer. So here it is. This is kind of a big, uh, big mouthful of a problem, but let's attempt it. 
150 milliliters of 1.0 molar HCl and 50 milliliters of 1.0 molar sodium hydroxide are mist, mixed in a coffee cup calorimeter, the temp of the solution goes from 21 degrees C to 27.5 degrees C. So calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction if the total volume of the solution is 100 milliliters and the density of the solution is 1.0 grams per mil. The specific heat of water uh, or of the solution is the same as that of water. So really what we're going to do is uh, calculate Q from our previous equation. So the idea here um, is just like we've done. We'll take this equation. Heat is a mass times C times delta T. This is oftentimes called the MCAT equation. So we'll use this equation. Uh, so what we'll need is the mass of the water, the heat capacity, and the temperature change. Now if you, t uh, if you take a look, they actually don't tell us the mass of the water. What they tell us is the milliliters of the water. So the tricky thing here is to be able to determine this mass. They actually tell us that we have a hundred milliliters uh, of a solution whose density is 1.0 grams per mil. Now the initial uh, amounts, when they tell us uh, that we have uh, actually 50 mils of a 1.0 molar HCl versus 50 mils of a 1.0 molar NaOH, this essentially is where the 100 mils comes from. So notice that's where it comes from. Oh. The, the molarities themselves here of the both the HCl and NaOH um, don't won't really concern us. It's really the total amount of water that's in the solution that we'll have to keep track of. So uh, anytime uh, you react hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide, uh, a little bit of heat is evolved, uh, quite quite a bit actually. If heat is involved, a noticeable amount of heat, the solution actually gets warm. And this is a reaction. This is a double replacement neutralization reaction from chapter four. But uh, we want to capture and calculate that heat that is released. So uh, what we're going to do here in order to get our M, which is the trickiest part, is actually to use density uh, to convert from milliliters to grams. This is a, the reason we do this is because very often it's easier to measure the actual uh, volume of the solution you're putting in the coffee cap, cup calorimeter as, uh, instead of measuring the, uh, the mass. So because this is volume, that's why they're giving us volume. But because mostly it's water, the density is 1.0. So if we use density, density is mass over volume. Uh, to solve for mass, in this case, we arrange the equation, and your mass will uh, be equal to density times volume. So density times volume is your mass. So if you take a look, technically, uh, it's the density is 1.0. Uh, the volume is 100. So essentially, you can see that your mass is 100 grams. This is our mass. Uh, Let's uh, take a look at our, so this we got mass, this is the first portion of our equation. Uh, our delta T is simply final minus initial for temperature. So our final is 27 and a half degrees C. Our initial is 21.0 degrees C. So subtract the two and we should get six and a half degrees Celsius as our delta T. So this is our delta T and C is given to us um, as a constant. So we're actually able to now calculate the heat released. So in this case our mass is 100 grams multiplied by 4.18 joules per gram degree C multiplied by our temperature change which is 6.5 degree C. All right, if we put this together, we get 100 times 4.18 times 6.5, getting us 2,717 joules. Again, uh, the degrees C cancel out, the grams cancel out. Um, and we can report it as joules. Let's go ahead and do significant figures in this case. And technically, because um, 100 grams only gives you one, oh, I'm sorry, 100 milliliters, which gives you 100 grams, gives you only one sig fig. And technically, we should report it in one sig fig. So this is actually roughly 3,000 joules of heat, or if you want, three kilojoules.
which is equivalent. So this is actually our final answer. Here's how much heat um, is released, is the idea, or the enthalpy uh, of the reaction. Now technically, um, because the heat is released, uh, there are two ways of saying it. You can either say the uh, 3,000 joules of heat is released, uh, or you can actually say that the enthalpy change is negative 300. So, uh, I'm sorry, negative 3,000 joules. So either you can say 3,000 joules is released. That word released can be substituted by this negative. Because remember, if the change of a system, if the system releases heat, that means its heat change is negative. It went down in heat. So, uh, we can say, say it both ways. Okay, uh, and we have actually just a few more slides to take a look here. Uh, and we're going to take a look at something called bomb calorimetry. Now, this is the same thing as we've just done, except in a, in a more official manner and more experimental manner. Whenever they want to find out how much uh, energy, how many calories, a certain uh, food item, for example, or a certain uh, reaction will release, they usually do it in a bomb calorimeter. So this is, you know, special, uh, special, maybe company or special lab that would do this. So this is the same thing as before, except now we're substituting a much more, uh, you know, scientific device for the coffee cup calorimeter. So it's the same thing. We're actually going to be able to uh, measure the temperature change inside the water. We're going to take a look at the temperature change here. Um, our reaction vessel will have our contain, uh, will have our reaction, and then this reaction will release heat to the surrounding water. And we'll be able to get it, um, get the same thing. Uh, the only difference here is that uh, our equation now does not have a mass uh, portion to it. In fact, if you take a look, we just have the heat capacity and the delta T. And the reason we don't have the the mass like we had in the previous example is because the mass of this bob calorimeter, uh, the mass of the water inside, never changes. So we decided to set uh, the amount of water, make it always the same. Uh, and then we don't have to worry about that portion. And if you take a look, the heat capacity of the calorimeter, as you'll see, will will have a special unit in it to account for the mass. Okay, so we'll finish up with this example. We have a 0 0.5865 gram sample of lactic acid is burned in a bomb calorimeter whose heat capacity is 4.812 kilojoules per degree Celsius. Uh, the temp increase increases from 23.10 24.95 degrees C. Calculate the heat of reaction of lactic acid per gram and per mole. So we're actually going to express it in two ways. So uh, technically what we're going to do is just uh, apply that equation, uh, but uh, here we're going to um, do it on a per gram and then a per mole basis. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this. So our equation is heat is equal to the heat capacity now of the calorimeter multiplied by delta T is the idea. So let's just plug the numbers in. Delta T in our case would be final minus initial. So the final temperature is 24.95 degrees C. Initial temperature is 23.10. For a total delta T of looks like, uh, is it going to be 1.85 degrees C. So we got this portion of the answer. Uh, and then the heat capacity of the calorimeter is given in the problem as 4.812 kilojoules. So let's just plug the numbers in. So we got 4.812. In this case, be careful, it's actually kilojoules. In the previous example, it was joules. In this case, it's kilojoules per degree Celsius. Multiply this by our temperature change, which is 1.85 degrees Celsius. And in this case, you'll see that uh, temperature degrees Celsius will cancel out, and we're going to be left with kilojoules. So if we do this little calculation, 4.812 multiplied by 1.85 gives us an answer of 8.9022 kilojoules. Now, uh, this is a preliminary answer. Uh, they want this uh, on a per gram and then a per mole basis. So it turns out that this much heat was released uh, from the reaction of 0.5865 grams. In fact, if we take a look here, 
this is how much we burned. So, you know, this is not a lot. Half a, half a gram is not really much, really half of a paper clip. But uh, if this much releases 8.9 kilojoules, then we can find out how much each gram releases. And the simplest way of doing this is actually to divide this value by how many grams we have. So on a per gram basis, we'll simply do 8.9022 kilojoules divided by how many grams we have, because we want kilojoules per gram. So if you divide this by 0.5865 grams, our answer will be in kilojoules per gram. So in this case, we'll do 8.9022 divided by 0.5865 giving us 15.18 um, and for significant figures sake look, looks like we're going to have three significant figures so how about 15.2 so 15.2 kilojoules per gram here it is if we want to express this on a per mole basis uh, let's just simply convert from grams to moles kind of like we did previously so on a per mole mole basis what we'll do is we'll take our 15.2 uh, kilojoules divided by one gram and then convert from grams to moles. Now our, our substance is lactic acid so we're going to actually have uh, since grams is in the bottom grams will have to go on top so how about grams of lactic acid which is HC3H5O3 in one mole of the same. So if we take a look at the mass, it um, uh, looks like we have three oxygens, that's 16 each, gives us 48, uh, plus six hydrogens, which is another 6.06, .06, that gives us 54.06, plus three carbons, which is about 36.03, for a total of 90.09. .09. So we simply added up the masses of the lactic acid. And then multiply that by 15.2 and we get ourselves a thousand three hundred and sixty-nine in this case kilojoules per mole which is uh, quite a bit uh, but uh, what we'll do here is since we get two significant figures why don't we say a th uh, looks like we have three significant figures actually from this answer so how about a thousand three hundred seventy kilojoules per mole and this is our final answer quite a bit of heat uh, but if we're, mol if we're burning a mole of lactic acid a mole is quite a bit a mole is actually 90 grams which would make sense if we burn half of a gram and we got 15 kilojoules if we burn 90 grams um, you know, 100, almost 200 times as much, we'll get quite a bit more kilojoules per mole. All right, and that will wrap up lesson three of chapter five.